In this video, we're going to discuss the Emacs initialization file and how you can customize its location on Windows 10. This video assumes that you've already got Emacs installed on your Windows 10 machine. If you have not yet installed Emacs, you can watch a previous video of mine for a quick and easy walkthrough of how to get it done. When Emacs starts up, it looks for an initialization file. There are three valid paths for the initialization file which you can choose from. I like to use the init.l file option because then all of my configuration is contained within the single .emacs.d directory. The reason I choose this option rather than the others is so that I can store all of my Emacs customizations in a single place. In the future when I install any packages, then they too will be stored in the .emacs.d directory. Having everything contained within a single directory is more for convenience than anything else. You can choose any option that you want. The tilde character represents the home directory of the user. On a Unix-like machine, the home directory of a user will be very clear, but on a Windows machine, what path does a tilde represent? Things are not so clear for Windows. But it is easy to find out. In order to find out what location tilde represents for you, we first need to open up Emacs. Once it's started up, press Ctrl and X, and then Ctrl and F to open up the Find File prompt. Within the Find File prompt, which appears, type tilde, forward slash, and then press Enter. This will open up a directory listing of the path which Emacs considers to be the user's home. You can see the path at the top. It's in this path that we need to place our .emacs.d directory and init.l file. Let's go ahead and create a bare minimum init.l file to verify that Emacs is able to pick up our customizations. We use Windows Explorer to navigate to the path indicated to from within Emacs. Once you reach the directory for your username, you will need to click View and then also click Hidden Items to make sure that you are able to see the App Data directory. You can see now we are at the path pointed to from within Emacs. In our case, the .emacs.d directory already exists, but in your case if it does not, then you can go ahead and create it. Within the .emacs.d directory, you should also create the init.l file. Make sure that the directory and file are named correctly. To verify that Emacs is able to pick up our customizations, we need to edit the init.l file to include a basic one. Most likely you will not have .l files associated with any program within Windows, so you won't be able to open the init file from Windows Explorer. That's fine, because l files are just text files, so from within Emacs, you can just click File, and then click Open File, then navigate to the location of the init.l file and choose to open it. Now within the init.l file, we can write an Emacs Lisp expression. Any Emacs Lisp expression within the file will run when Emacs starts up. The simplest expression to use is a message. We'll just write hello from init.l. When it is evaluated by Emacs, the expression just writes the message given to it to the message buffer. We'll see what that means exactly in a few seconds. We can now close Emacs and choose to save our changes. Now let's open Emacs again to see whether it's picked up our customization. Click on the buffers option on the toolbar and choose to view the messages buffer. We can clearly see that Emacs picked up our customization and from now on whenever it is started Emacs will show the message within its message buffer. Writing a message to the message buffer is an extremely trivial example of a customization. But that's fine, because all we wanted to do was verify that Emacs is able to read our customizations correctly. And from the message buffer we can see that it is. Although I've shown how you can determine where to place your init file so you can customize Emacs, you may want to change the location of the .emacs.d directory to a path of your own choosing. In order to do that, we need to set a user environment variable called home. The value of the variable should be the path where you want Emacs to look for the .emacs.d directory. Let's say that we want the directory named after the user to be the location of our .emacs.d directory. In our case, our username is Ligerlearn. Our first step is to right click this PC on Windows Explorer. Click on Properties, and then click Advanced System Settings. Click the Advanced tab, then click the Environment Variables button. Now we need to create a new environment variable for the user called home, which as its value has the path to where we want to put our .emacs.d directory. Click on new, 
give the new variable the name home, click on the entry box for variable value, now click browse directory and now navigate to the directory you want to be the home directory which in this case is just the LIGA learn directory because that's the name of the current user. You can choose any custom location that you want to be your home. For example you might want to choose documents but I'm going to choose my user directory. Click OK and OK to close the open dialog boxes. We've now set the value of the home environment variable. Our init.l file is still in the old location. To verify that Emacs is no longer looking in the old location, we can start it up and go to the message buffer. You can see here that the message in our init.l file is not being picked up. So Emacs is no longer looking in the old location for the .emacs.d directory and the init.l file. You can also see that when we opened Emacs, it went and created the .emacs.d directory in the location which we have saved as our home. But the folder itself is empty. Let's delete the empty folder and move our original .emacs.d directory which contains our init.l file from the old location to the new location which we defined as our home. Now when we open Emacs and view the message buffer, we can see that it is picking up our customization just fine. You've now successfully configured your environment so Emacs is able to pick up your init.l file from your custom location. If you want to see more helpful tips and tricks on Emacs, be sure to subscribe and check out some of the other videos available on my channel.